A fairly common conversation that I have is with sound guys who are telling me things like, I got 3,000 watts going into these woofers down here because um, I'm running this amplifier in bridge mode and it's putting out 3,000 watts bridged and this system just really pounds. To uh, which I'll reply, wow, that's, that's impressive. You know, if you put 3,000 watts into any rational speaker driver, that voice coil will be toast. Um, also, uh, are you plugging that thing into a typical 120 volt wall circuit? Oh, yeah, 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 sure, sure. Well, you know, the 120 volt wall circuit gives you about 1800 watts. And so, uh, if you've got 1800 watts coming in, and the amplifier, if it's a linear amp like class AB or class G or H, is only going to be about between 60 to 70 percent efficient. If you're using a digital amp, it's probably closer to 90 something percent efficient but nevertheless you still only have 1800 watts coming in so you can't get more than that coming out so I don't think you're really getting that 3000 watts furthermore there are reasons not to bridge amplifiers and I almost never bridge amplifiers and I'll tell you why in this video in just a second my name is Barry I'm a sound engineer in the Minneapolis St. Paul Twin Cities area I've worked with a lot of bands done a lot of live sound and I don't like bridging amplifiers and here's why when you bridge the amplifier you make the amplifier swing more voltage output okay so imagine you've got an, a stereo amplifier which is two amplifiers in one box and each one has got a, a ground and it can swing its output plus or minus of that to drive your loudspeaker and so when it drives positive it causes the speaker cone to push outward and when it pulls down negative from from zero it pulls the speaker cone inward simple enough and so if I was to take that stereo amplifier and flip the polarity on one side of it so left channel is running like normal and right channel is got its plus and minuses on its input swapped around then the left side swings up and down the right side swings up and down and they're working against each other right because I swapped the polarity so when left goes up right goes down and vice versa and uh, we hook our speaker across those two positive terminals and now instead of just going from zero up and down we're working against these two and we get a larger voltage swing right and so in theory we could swing twice the voltage and if you swing twice the voltage the way the math works out you get four times the power now the limiting factor is the amount of current that that speaker is going to draw at four times the power and usually the power amplifier can't really get there but in theory you should get four times the power out of the amplifier so if you have a 100 watt amplifier in stereo it should deliver 400 watts bridged and you can look at that specification to get a clue as to what the power current limiting is of the amplifier so if you look at the specifications and it's 100 watts stereo and 400 watts bridged that would tell me that this thing is a pretty beefy amplifier but if it's a 100 watt stereo and only 200 watts in bridge mode well that means the amplifier is going to be hitting its limits before it can really deliver all of its potential and uh, rarely will you see a true 4 to 1 relationship between the stereo versus mono bridge specification but that is a good way to get a clue as to how beefy that amplifier truly is but I almost never run amps in bridged mode. I don't think it's a good idea. And I'll tell you why. Well, one is if I have an amplifier, it's got a certain amount of distortion associated with it. And if I stack two amplifiers on top of each other, I'm going to basically double those specs. So the amplifier is going to have a little more noise, a little more distortion. And that's not a good thing. Although that's not really usually a prime consideration in terms of why I don't bridge amplifiers. Like I mentioned, when you bridge amplifiers, you're making the system work really, really hard. And when you make the system work really hard, you generate a lot of heat. And so, running the amplifier in a configuration that generates a lot of heat, that's going to reduce the reliability of your system. It just really beats on equipment hard. Now, I know we all enjoy going to a truck and tractor pulls and watching those guys, you know, try to pull super heavy loads. 
But what do we see at truck and tractor pulls? Well, sometimes we see things like broken axles, but oftentimes we see blown engines because of overheating, because of the load that they're trying to drive. So if you have an amplifier that's designed to run at 100 watts and dissipate that kind of power, and then suddenly you're, um, you got two of those things, so let's say that's 200 watts of power output out of that box and it's associated heat dissipation, but you're running that 200 watt box at 400 watts, that's really stressful for the equipment. Now sure, some equipment is designed to run in bridged mode and they have enough fans and heat dissipation that it can actually do that. But it's a difficult, difficult situation for your amplifier to be in. So you're really stressing your equipment. Maybe the more important factor, though, is that in addition to providing a lot of power to push the speakers out and pull them back, the amplifier has a very low impedance output, which means it has a very strong connection to your driver. So when the kick drum hits, it causes a speaker cone to go flying forward, but we also want it to be able to break that speaker cone at the end of its travel, so it doesn't just fly forward and flop around and create indistinct bass. We want it to fly forward and come to an immediate stop when it needs to, and then be tightly controlled as it pulls it back into the next wave of its progress. And tightly stop. So we want the amplifier to have really tight control over that cone motion. And when you stack two amplifiers together, well, you've only got half of the control of the cone motion that you did if you had one. And so that means that when the kick drum hits, it can't quite slam on the brakes quite as hard at the end of the cone excursion. And so you get a little bit more floppiness in your bottom end. And your bottom end doesn't sound quite as tight as it would under a stereo mode. Now, of course, different amplifiers are different. Some of them are absolute brutes and they still work fine. Others, you'll notice a big sound quality difference between running in normal mode versus bridge mode. So for these reasons, I tend to avoid running amplifiers in bridged mode. If my amplifier doesn't provide enough power, I'll get a bigger amp. Now, also, let's talk about the power gains that you get. In an ideal world, you're going to get four times the power out of that amplifier. In the real world, you're probably not going to make that. And so you'd think that four times the power is going to be pretty darn significant. But here's the thing, is that the relationship of loudness from our PA system or our speakers and the amount of power going in, it's logarithmic. It's not linear. And so... If you're running at 100 watts and you bump the system up to 200 watts, it's not twice as loud. It's barely perceptible. And you can prove this yourself because that's a 3 dB difference. And so dial up some music on your mixer and watch the meters and uh, listen to it for a while. Maybe the meters are peaking at, you know, 0 dB. Now turn the level up in the output so the meters are reading plus 3 dB. And hear the difference. You'll hear a little bit of loudness difference, but it won't really knock your stocks off. It's not huge, but that's twice the power. Now, instead, let's uh, play some music on your mixer, and we'll uh, have those peaks hitting at minus 6 dB. Okay. Now we're going to turn up the gains until those peaks hit 0 dB. Now that's four times the power difference, and it's only... A moderate little bump in sound level. So, you know, hooking up your amplifier in bridged mode will give you more power output, but it's really not going to give you all that much loudness difference in terms of the perception of the audience in terms of the power coming out of the PA. And so you're going to be just beating the heck out of your poor amplifiers, pushing things to the limit really hard, making a lot of heat, reducing the reliability of your system for just a little bit of output level difference. If you want to make a perceptible, serious change in output level to your audience, you need to jump about 10 dB. 10 dB is equated to about twice loudness out in the audience. And 10 dB is roughly 10 times the power so if you want to make a big difference in the amount of output to your audience, 
you need to jump about 10 times in power. So if you're running 500 watts, now you're looking at 5,000 watts. Can your speakers take 5,000 watts of input? Probably not. So now you're looking at an array of speakers that can take that kind of power. So once you're up beyond about 500 watts per channel, it starts getting to be a fair amount of work to get a lot higher than that. So if your loudspeaker system isn't loud enough, instead of just throwing more amplifier at it, maybe it's a good idea to take a look at the efficiency of the loudspeaker system and consider different speakers that are more efficient. For example, you could have speakers that are rated at 96 dB per watt efficient versus another speaker system, PA speaker system, that's rated at 102 dB per watt efficient. Well, the amount of power that's necessary between one set of boxes and another set of boxes with those efficiency rating differences is really significant. And so uh, pay attention to the efficiency rating of your PA loudspeakers if you want to be able to get loud with a rational amount of power. Throwing more amplifier at your system is probably not the direction that you want to head to um, easily get to the next level of sound pressure level. Anyway, friends, so those are some thoughts that I have on bridging amplifiers. I, I'm not saying it's a bad thing necessarily, but I do think that it causes you to have less distinct bass, and it really stresses your amplifiers hard. And so, and I think the gains you get out of it really aren't that all that great. So I don't advise doing it. I don't do it. And uh, I thought I'd pass on that tip to you. So, whether or not you bridge your amplifiers or decide not to, either way, I'd appreciate if you would uh, click the bell button, click subscribe, and catch me again in another episode of Sound Advice. Thank you.